Cancer is one of the most common diseases in America today. Most cancers that are diagnosed are what we call sporadic, and the term sporadic refers to somebody developing a cancer when there really isn't a significant family history, so there's nothing to point to in the family for a reason why this person would be at any higher risk than anyone else. There's also a group of cancers that we call familial. These are cancers where in the family, if you look, there's more cancer overall than you would expect in your average family, um, but there isn't a specific cause that we can point to again. So these, again, are unfortunately cases that we can't provide a specific answer for. About 10%, so the minority of cancers, are hereditary, and these are the tumors where we we can provide an answer for why they developed, and the answer is a specific inherited genetic factor, um, something we call a mutation, that has led to an increased chance of cancer development in that individual. And so there are different ways to identify people who are at higher risk for fitting into this hereditary group than the familial group, um, but the, the diagnosis of hereditary cancer is done traditionally through genetic testing. And so there, there are different ways to go about the genetic testing. Um, more recently, we've had some significant advances in the technology that's available to us to do this testing, and with that have come some really exciting advances in um, the options that are available to clinicians and patients for how to assess the chance that they fit into the hereditary wedge of, of the pie. Uh, and, and for us, we've introduced a, a number of tests. Um, many of them analyze multiple genes at once rather than just the traditional look at one gene. If that's negative, maybe go on to another one, maybe stop. So we're taking a, a much bigger snapshot right up front. Of these tests, Cancer Next is our most comprehensive panel that we offer right now. Uh, when we first launched it back in early 2012, it included 22 genes. That quickly went up to 24 genes. Now it's at 28. So um, clearly this is a test that will continue to evolve over time. Uh, so the 28 genes on Cancer Next span uh, a spectrum of, of different tumor types. So the, the genes as a whole are associated with many different types of cancer. There are some genes that are associated with breast and ovarian cancer, others that are associated with colorectal and other GI cancers like gastric and pancreatic, um, renal cancer, uh, reproductive system cancers like endometrial and uh, ovarian. The 28 genes are, you can group them really into two two broad categories. You have high risk genes and moderate risk or intermediate risk genes. And in that high risk group are some of the more well-known genes, genes like BRCA, um, the genes that are associated with Lynch syndrome or HNPCC, genes like TP53. So these are kind of our, our usual suspects in this high risk group. The intermediate or moderate risk group of genes, these are genes that we, we know less about. Um, they've been uh, They've been identified more recently, so there's there's less data available on them, but from the data we have, it's clear they do lead to an increase in cancer risk for the people that carry a mutation, one of them. And down the road, the, these are really the genes, the intermediate risk ones, where the, the research focus is right now to um, figure out if there are treatment methods that work better for these families, um, what exactly are the cancer risks. So we're still learning a lot about this group, but it's clear that they are important. This is a test that's really appropriate for patients where there's a significant suspicion that they do fit somewhere in the hereditary cancer wedge, um, but the presentation, the pattern of cancers in the family aren't specific enough to, to single out a single one gene to test, um, or they have, they have a presentation that might overlap multiple genes. So these are really for the patients that have very significant uh, personal and family histories of cancer and with all the fantastic research that's being done out there to identify new genes, um, to describe those genes, and to uh, really uh, get a handle on what the cancer associations are and the cancer risks, we will continue to incorporate that to make sure that our test is matching what's being done on the cutting edge so we can provide that to patients and clinicians.